Footland, we have a jam-packed mini Megalodon show here for you today. We are covering so many matchups, including Thunder Snow in today's matchups. We're getting into the starts of the week, the Boom Boom Kicker, all sorts of good things on today's episode. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment about how your week's going, and maybe pray for me in my matchup against Mike. <laughs> The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Again, it's football time. It never stops. <laughs> never stops. Oh, Jason's face says it all. This, Thurs- is, this is the week. Thursday. We had been talking Phoenix Suns before hitting the record button, and I was happy for a moment. Just a single solitary moment. And then you said those dumb words, it's football time, and because it reminded it me. Oh, it's so good. It reminded me. How hard I'm about to tilt my oh, face about, off this whole weekend. About to tilt? Yeah. Oh, Brother, you're mid tilt. I mean, you know, you got in uh I, I was I was here first, Andy, you walked in and you could tell I was a whirling struggling dervish. With, uh, I I mean I was clapping and all I was saying was I want to watch the accident. I want yes. to watch the a- I mean, I am ready to rubberneck this game tonight and and I mean Jason is He's beginning to build so many potential choices into his decisions for tonight that it's like hitting an impossible parlay. Like <laughs> mathematically, he's getting to the point where he can't make the right combination of choices. Specifically, he's got all these flex choices this week, and the it's compounded. Jason, you and Mike are facing off head to head. Foot Clan, follow along. Um, I will be watching with you with giggles from the sideline. But they're playing. This game is so important to both of this you. This is this could be our season for yes. the two of us. We both have awesome teams that have had some uh, bad luck along the way. One of us could easily miss the playoffs. One of us is pretty much a lock for the playoffs, based on what happens this weekend. And yeah. so Jason is toiling with with flex decisions, as all of you are out there. That's why I mean he's an expert. He obviously knows the right oh, the yeah, right I'm way gonna, to go. I'm land it. But um, we've got Titans Packers tonight. <laughs> Jason's got himself some Derrick Henry, so Mike will be just when you are facing Derrick Henry. Let me let me explain sure, what you are sure. doing. You are zooming your eyeballs on the clock. You want that clock yeah. to just run out as fast as possible. You know, just some slow drives. AJ Dillon just get some third down pickups. Just keep him off the field. Keep him off the field and try to escape without the week being over already. Yes, yes, 100%. If we can get out of here with... <laughs> I can't wait! If we could get, like, 80 and a touchdown... You're happy. I accept. You just don't want 203. <laughs> I, pr- I would prefer that. Look, and the then- snow <laughs> is, has fallen in Vermont. We know that Yeti is there. The weather is cold. Oh, it, Things are setting up right. But now, the question for me is Christian Watson, who yeah. I have had on my bench last week. And um, good play. Thank you. Uh, you have Alan Lazard. So yeah. there's so many nuances to this game of me versus you, Packer versus Packer, uh, cold weather. Randall Cobb is back. Yeah. How does the how does the snow model work when it, they're up against another cold weather team? I, it doesn't matter. I, oh, it, it, in, so, historically speaking, Kyle, are we? Do we have anything on the snow model about? Well, no. Yetis still eat Canadians, and they're from, but they're from the north. So I think the Yeti is still undefeated. They eat Canadians. Well, I, look, I'm just saying, like the yeah. Canadians are from the north. You said, how do they we, do against cold weather? The world knows that the Canadian flesh is just a little bit tastier. <laughs> for the for mythological creatures. Yeah, I guess I didn't really connect the dots too well there. <laughs> no, also it's the are the Packers Canadian? Is no, this? no. I mean the the, okay. pre, the, the, the kind of uh, <laughs> it was just an anecdote. <laughs> the situation was he said, "How do they do against people from the north?" Okay, cold yeah. weather teams like the Green yeah. Bay Packers. I just figured the the Canadians now, are, are as north as they get. But are they more prepared to fight off a Yeti? 
this these are questions we like the people in the Swiss Alps. They Thank know you. how to handle a Yeti. Well, I'm doing, they're pretty neutral over there on Yetis. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Fantasy <laughs> Footballers. These are the types of questions we'll answer with detailed statistical analysis on today's show. Yes. Um, the important questions. So it will be fun to watch what happens tonight and through the weekend. Jason, get the blood pressure medication. Don't. You know, overindulge on on heart attack inducing foods. I have a resting heart rate of eighty five right now, yeah, and I will expect that to go up through the weekend. Uh, so big show today. Never not working. Pretty important topic we're talking about there. News and notes. The fantasy forecast. The starts of the week. The boom boom kicker. Uh, Jam packed episode. Brooks kept trying to get us to hit record this morning because he knew how jam packed it was going to be. You got somewhere to be, Brooksy? Nah. We got Jay Grizz in the uh, Deucer's Alley today. Oh, wow. This is his first time producing a show, so yeah. if anything goes wrong, you know what happened. Yeah, he's big. He's pretty big. Um, Al Borland just taking another lazy day, and uh, <laughs> Brooks is on the ones and twos. The Borgogan is here as well. Let's get into Never Not Working. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Well, every week we are diving into some important topics. Uh, slightly, slightly more relevant than Yeti-related analysis. Mm -hmm. And today we, Disagree. <laughs> we are looking at um, just target share and... And analyzing that number, we use it often. We talk about targets being earned. Uh, we talk about the fact that, you know, targets are a skill and it's something that we use as fantasy players to identify who the alphas are in these offenses. And I want to get a little bit more nuanced with target share today. Target share is a good first step in showing you what percentage of team targets a skilled player is demanding, right? Right. Um, you look at target share numbers this year. DeAndre Hopkins is at 32.9%. Number one, CeeDee Lamb, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown. That's your top list of target share. So that's also a list of the best wide receivers in football. But what I want to bring to mind today is the fact that we need context because that number is blind when you are comparing that number across different passing pies for different teams because you have to look at things like how often is a team throwing the football at all? How valuable are those targets? For example, a Mahomes target much more valuable than a Russell Wilson target. How often does the team stay on the field? How efficient are they? So let's compare some numbers. Let's look at players that both have the same target share, but different nuance, different context. Amon Ross St. Brown, Darnell Mooney, Okay, both good players. Also, the sun and the moon. Oh, oh so it's a very like important we, okay, comparison. I like what okay. we did there. Twenty-eight percent target share, both of them, but very different archetypes in terms of wide receivers. One's a PPR slot receiver; the other is a four-three-eight deep threat. Look, the Bears and the Lions—they actually average the same fantasy points per pass attempt. So you've got same target share, fa same fantasy points per pass attempt. Interesting. But Chicago—they rank last in pass rate. So you completely nerf the chances that Darnell Mooney is going to get, the routes, the opportunities. He has 45th in total routes run. 45th in total routes run, same target share. That's fewer routes run than Ben Skoranek. Um, And that's despite what the Bears don't even have a bye week yet. Right. They haven't even – they have 10 weeks so far. <laughs> Amon Ra, 10th in fantasy points per route run. It is not apples to apples when you look at the offense surrounding these target share numbers, right? Sure. DJ Moore, 27.8% target share. That is 11th. Delightful. He's barely, like I read those names earlier, he's like a few names down the list from that. 83rd in fantasy points per target. Also a career low in yards after the catch per target. Don't worry, Darnold's on his way. So if he, <laughs> which I saw that news, they were like, some people want him to get an opportunity I don't know who that is. Uh, People look, who've watched the Panthers. I mean, DJ Moore is the one of the greatest examples of the target share 
not telling the whole story, just being chapter one in a book that ends up with a bad ending. Carolina's offense, incredibly inefficient. Fewest total plays per game, 25th in pass rate over expectation. Bad offense, bad targets. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if that yards after catch number is affected by the fact that when he gets a target he finally can catch, he's not in a position to run anymore mm -hmm. like he used to be. And then the biggest example I think we've seen this year, and I'll give credit to Jason on seeing this coming because it would be easy for me to take target share numbers, target numbers, and tell you Deontay Johnson's the same as he's always been. 26% target share, delicious. Ninth in total targets, spectacular. 12th in red zone targets, let's go. Deontay must be dominating for your fantasy roster. 96th in fantasy points per target. A Patrick Mahomes pass attempt is worth three times a Steelers pass attempt this year. Okay. That's a shocking that's, number. Good yeah. work there, Kyle, that's finding that information. Interesting like uh, to quantify I mean, think what, about, what the information we have right now, the value of one person's passing if, attempt. If, and obviously it's a Steeler pass attempt because Trubisky was part of it. But like right now, Oh, Pickett's not if better. Pickett, uh, no, no. I'm just saying like it's not just including one quarterback. But if Pickett goes back to pass, and he throws three consecutive passes at Deontay Johnson that is less valuable than one pass from Patrick Mahomes. So, uh, I look, Deontay's doing nothing wrong by way of that target share. It is an earned stat. You earn those targets. You're apparently open. <laughs> You're somebody that the quarterback is staring down. But there's a lot that goes into the equation. And my only problem with the target share number really is when you fall back on it to say why that player is still good, uh, for the rest of the year, right? Like we can't, because what happens is you look dumb over time. Week two, look at that target share for Kyle, right. Kyle Pitts. Week five, look at that target share for Kyle Pitts. Week eight, look at me not making the playoffs. Right. It, it's it's one of those things that is good for knowing that the player is good more in a dynasty outlook and a long term outlook. We we we've talked about this, you know, for years, everybody knows it, but we have to remind ourselves. This has been like a tip on things to remember in the off season is how important quarterback play is for the wide receiver. Next year, Kyle Pitts is probably going to have a rookie quarterback and people are going to be like, yes, he's got a new quarterback. It's going to solve it. That's probably not going to be the case. Rookie quarterbacks don't really support a lot of passing yards and, and passing touchdowns. Um, so we, we just have to, continue to fade wide receivers with bad quarterbacks. Yeah, and you look at that list. Kyler, Dak, Stafford, Tua, Cousins. I mean, you do have foundational quarterbacks there. Something to remember. So uh, that is it, unless, Mike, you have anything you want to add. I do not. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of uh, quarterbacks, Andy Dalton is going to remain the starter in Week 11 for the New Orleans Saints. Dennis Allen came out and said Jameis Winston's not going to be 100% healthy this season, but is healthy enough to serve as the backup. And practice in full every day. So, uh, I mean, I get it. That that, huh. that, is a, that is a situation that could be true where uh, it's probably not best for him to go out and take a bunch of hits. And But we now know that for the rest of the season, it appears like it's Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton has played poor enough in stretches to be benched and has not been benched yet. I still think it could happen. Oh, I mean, Dal Dalton can really he can he can do a lot to bench himself here. Uh, but <laughs> bench yourself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, we have clarity um, sure. that it's Dalton, which means the play is not going to be phenomenal. Yeah, there are definitely injuries where your performance could be affected. You may be able to get out there, but maybe you're less, uh, you know, accurate or mm -hmm. something of that nature uh matthew stafford full participant he's on track to play in week 11 okay with his maybe concussion that's correct okay yeah um uh, no one will ever know it's does, between does him and the Staff lord does stafford no he has no idea like can the doctor tell him it's one of the signs of concussion you do not know whether you have one okay 
Okay. Uh, Taylor Heineke will start in week 11. Ron Rivera confirming. This was the first week that Carson Wentz was eligible to return. Um, you know, I'd be telling him to just heal up, buddy. Uh, Justin Jefferson, limited. Devontae Adams, limited. I don't think those are situations that we need to worry about until we get practice reports today. But just be aware, no one likes to see their Justin Jefferson show up on the injury report. With a toe. No one does. That is right. Uh, yeah, certainly I'm, really, I'm pretty disappointed. Held my breath that. Uh, for that. Mark Andrews returned to a limited practice. You might have seen a report that he was not at practice. That was circulating. That was for the kind of open media portion, but he did participate uh, in limited fashion. That's so interesting. He has like, been in some... Didn't, the, he didn't want to show the media. It's like Josh Allen last yeah. week. Yeah, like, milking the suspense. We never talked about that. Oh, my goodness gracious. But uh, I, I prefer not to. <laughs> I can't get back into that. I think there's some uh, of that going on with Arizona right now. Kyler Murray, Colt McCoy, both day to day. There's reports that Kyler can miss another week. If you listen to Cliff Kingsbury talk about it, he says he hopes one of these guys are out there. I thought both reports sounded optimistic when I listened to him. I thought there's a chance that both of these guys could be ready, and you're just trying to get that you know, advantage over San Francisco on Monday Night Football. The the thing for Cliff, you know the, the, the line of Princess Bride when he's like, I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> I think that's true for the phrase day-to-day. -day. I don't think Cliff understands what day to day actually means yeah i i think he he thinks it means he's injured but he's gonna play soon someday maybe he mean he means days to days maybe maybe that's what he's, he's pluralizing it. are we are is he just dropping the s i don't know we're not hearing it now if he said if someone was week to week does that mean season oh, that ender? means that we'll see them in three years yeah okay hey guess what oh baby there is a day -day? chance. There's, <laughs> there's a chance Hollywood Brown is back. He's, he's been day to day on the IR for four weeks. Monday night, there is a chance uh, he's been designated to return from the foot fracture. That is great news. The original timeline was six weeks. This will have been four missed games. So this is a little bit earlier, which... Uh, well, the original timeline was season ending. Well, the, that was the original fear. The original timeline, once they actually got the report on the, the fracture was going to be six weeks. So this is earlier, which is both good news in the sense that it looks like his healing and his recovery has gone excellent, but also leads me to believe that like, I'm not going to, in any way, shape, or form, rely on a Monday night player coming off of this injury that might not yeah. play. You you give him this We week. have no idea of who you are a quarterback right. either. Um, but it's a good sign for this offense. And, and if you're looking at Cardinals' offensive pieces down the line – Kyler should be back. He'll have these weapons. And if you're in a league that doesn't have an IR slot, Hollywood, I'm sure, was dropped in plenty of those leagues over the last little while. Be aware sure. that he's been activated and uh, pick him up. And then the Chiefs uh, Wednesday practice. Juju didn't practice. McColl didn't practice. MBS didn't practice. So that's a Sunday night football game. Juju, McColl, MBS, they shouldn't really be factored into your plans this weekend because of that start time yeah mvs has an illness so i i don't necessarily think he's going to miss juju's concussion was one of those that looked serious on the field there's no way he plays exactly so uh, he is like ruled out to me and mccall already missed the game the last game so i'm if he's missing practice i'm gonna go ahead and mentally rule him out for now as well Chargers Sunday night game as well. Obviously, the other side of this ball game, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, both return to individual mm -hmm. drills. Uh, the wide receivers in this game, there are there are questions on both sides of the ball. Do you think there's any chance Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are out there on the field, Jason? I think it's very very low odds that both of them are out. Uh, we were talking this morning. Both we of see them are out or out there? out there that's, on the they're field. They're very different things. Yeah, that's fair. Thank you for <laughs> pointing that out. Um, you know, we were, before the show, just giving our own little takes. Keenan Allen feels 50-50 to play. Mike Williams feels 80-20 to not play. Agreed. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. I will say this. Kadarius, Tony, Josh Palmer, they're very much affected by the availability of those other players, even if you don't have confidence in those players themselves. Mm -hmm. As there is a superstar. As Jason would say on Kansas City. <laughs> That's right. Justin Watson, baby. So um if right now, Mike, in a with what you know, Kadarius Tony or Josh Palmer, who do you have more interest in this week? Tony. Really? Yeah. Okay. It, it what will also be interesting is Tony. <laughs> hey, Tony. <laughs> uh the 
Patrick, like, let's say all three of these guys miss, okay? The 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 situation of Patrick Mahomes being without his weapons and Justin Herbert, like, like we've had the entire season, Justin Herbert, no weapons, okay? Herbert's fine, but he doesn't have his – once he gets his weapons, he'll be perfectly fine. But will Patrick Mahomes – Say I, that does not matter to me. Well, he's got he's got his main weapon. Yeah, he's got Kelsey. So well, I think he'll well be one, but just MBS is uh, he doesn't count as a weapon. He's part of the offense. No, I know he helps. He had a big open catch last up. week. Opens yeah. things up yeah, for other did. players. Yeah, I mean, I, this is one of the benefits of adding Kadarius Tony to the offense is you are you are making up for the potential absence of these different weapons. Yeah, and I I too would also take Kadarius Tony over Palmer. Both have great opportunities. But Kadarius Tony looks like the much more explosive, talented player. And we just talked more about More touchdowns the, for Patrick Mahomes. The yeah. value of Mahomes' targets, yep. Into the forecast we go. Fantasy forecast. Well, it's very important to me that we begin with a matchup that I'm going to call the Thunder Snow matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland, three and six. What is going on? Going to Buffalo, who are who are sitting at six and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buffalo minus seven and a half. The over/under is now forty-two. It opened at forty-six and a half. Thunder snow is a. It's a word I've never heard yeah, until what, now. I need this explained to me. What is does anyone know? It's I, a snowstorm with thunder. It is. It's like um, you know how you can get like a, a nice rainy day that's not a thunder. It's not yeah. a thunderstorm. It's just a. A rainy day. That's what like normal snows like. But okay. if there's like thunder and lightning and snow all at once, well, that's thunder how, snow. It's thunder snow. Okay, but like that sounds like one of those uh, monster I, truck rallies. <laughs> Sunday, yeah. Sunday, Sunday. I, but I feel like if you add thunder to a snowstorm, you get it, some lightning in there it, too, Mike. Okay, well you can. But we have thunderstorms here in Arizona without like lightning is not an issue. Uh no, it's happening up there in the clouds. Right. Yeah, but uh, this is the but first it's not time striking. That, right. This is this, and it, to be clear, these are icicle lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do okay. Hit. Now we're talking about dangerous stuff in Buffalo. If only there was something that humanity could do. Not possible. That would like protect us from the elements of outside. Like if there was a if there were like a truly, lid, like a lid for like the a lid. Yeah, for the bull, something over my head. You know. Well, Protect me from the thunderstorm, the thunder snowstorm, whatever it is. Mike, they, they, they have their facilities right now. If they were ever to build a new one, that's right. something they, surely could, they, they could address would, it. Surely they would say, we will never have to deal with something uncomfortable like this again. Well, they're not going to put a billion dollars into a new Making like the same open exact mistake. air stadium. Yeah, why would you do that? I mean, that would be freaking ridiculous it's the definition of insanity just repeating the same Thunder thing over snow. And expecting different results well but the thing is is people like outdoor games yeah if only there sure. was a the rest of the episode Brooks. if only there was a retractable roof right. system that people could create to where they could play good weather games outdoors and protect yourself from i don't know games that are being rumored to possibly move let like, me let me read you the uh the forecast three to six feet of snow by sunday including possible thunder snow shaping out to be potentially one of the most extreme snowstorms in the history of the United States of America. Do people in Buffalo like just live outside? Like, do they not have like, oh, uh, like lids on their houses? Yeah. Yeah. Do they just, they, they live in open air homes. <laughs> There's just some walls and they're like, yeah, this is how we've always I mean, done somebody, it. We're a football town. I'm not putting a roof on my <laughs> own. There's somebody at just, this meeting. Just with, smashing wings and getting snowed on. <laughs> and we, tables and tables are also being destroyed. Are we done with Buffalo? <laughs> we're, we're, I will we're, never. We're I done will, with. I will never cease I, with this I, argument. I absolutely hate the <laughs> open air stadium in Snowville country and windy areas. But we can we can conclude that thought and get back to the actual game. And from a fantasy perspective, with regards to the weather, I was reading a recent article from Kevin Roth. He is a, a meteorologist who focuses on fantasy, does work with Roto Grinders, and he says that a lot of those <clears throat> three to six feet things are um, worst case, probably not going to happen. One to two feet is more probable, but regardless, for this game, the snow is anticipated to come all before the game. 
as of this recording, there is not even expected to be snowfall during the game other than little flurries. They know how to clean it up. So I do think that the massive, gigantic fears of an eight to nothing snowball game are probably is not going to happen. There, the possibility of them moving this game simply because of the the idea of getting fans to the game, the safety around that. If this yes. is a extreme weather event, it might be less about can we play through it and, you know, they can clear the field off and more about, you know, do, can anybody show up safely to this football game? That is certainly a possibility. I believe it was 2014 uh, where they had to move Buffalo for a similar situation. Snow games traditionally produce 45 more combined rushing yards and one full rushing touchdown. Over non-snow games, there is a good article on the site titled Weather, Weather Really Matters by oh, Matt DeSorbo. Oh, Matthew, so well, clever. Well done. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of getting through that title. But that makes you – you've got some decisions here surrounding, I think, peripheral options, right, in a sure. snow game. You're not going to sit Stephon Diggs under any circumstance. And Josh Allen, he is a running back. He is one of those players more immune to this circumstance at the quarterback position. Yeah, the rushing touchdowns aren't just running back touchdowns. They're rushing touchdowns. Josh Allen could easily uh, convert passing touchdowns into rushing touchdowns and I, in this game. I want to point out that Josh Allen, rushing-wise recently, I mean, 32, 49, 86, 84, like significantly more than like Jalen Hurts has put up lately. People have talked about him struggling with the passing game right now. He is making up for it fantasy-wise with the running game. Let's talk about uh, some other options, though. Devin Singletary, Gabe Davis, Dawson Knox, where are you with those uh, secondary options in the Buffalo offense that, you know, they're facing a Browns defense that is very vulnerable this yeah, year? Yeah, they are very vulnerable. I'm a little bit more hesitant with Gabriel Davis due to the weather. There is supposed to be about 15-mile-an-hour wins. That affects more of the deep passing. That's kind of the heyday for Gabriel Davis. Not that he can't catch a touchdown in this and, and that you need to bench him, but he would be more my concern in this game. The real question for me is Devin Singletary. He has had a lot of really worthless games this season, but when he's involved and, you know, last week we saw two touchdowns, um, 13 carries, played 72% of the snaps. This is a snowy game, so it could work out well for the, the running game in a good matchup against Cleveland. He is my biggest question. He's one of the four players on my personal roster against Mike this week that I'm trying to decide between him, Christian Watson, Josh Palmer, kind of that tier. So, Andy, let me ask you, uh, Devin Singletary or Christian Watson? <laughs> I uh, Because of the – look, both players have the chance of hurting you. Uh, I, I do lean Watson. Um, I, I don't. It's hard for me not to – you know, it's three touchdowns. This is a, a very explosive player. I'm not world worried about Randall Cobb. Uh, I think you're, all of your shots in this game, they're not coming. They're not going to Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard's really good at, you know, um, you know, you get in the red zone, Alan Lazard is a threat. But I think your shots in this game are 100% to Christian Watson. So I do lean that direction. It depends on what your team needs. So that's my a win. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Devin Singletary to me is a flex option. I think option. Singlet yeah, Singletary is a flex option for me. I have him right now at running back twenty, so he's he's still he's in the side inside the top twenty four. I'm not worried about playing him. Any renewed uh, hopes for Kareem Hunt in a game that might need more rushing? Never. Okay, never. No, it is really Cleveland. What are you doing? It's I mean, very difficult to trust Kareem Hunt right now with the way that they've been utilizing him or, or not utilizing I, him. Thirty six percent of the snaps, six carries last game. That's not a player you can. Can we start. just can we just play Nick Chubb and no one else on the Cleveland Browns? I mean, I don't. Amari Cooper on the road has been really bad with the weather situation. I know Donovan Peoples Jones has been involved, but again, you're you're playing a defense that's really, really good on their home turf in a tough weather game. You know, if it's that cold, you know, you have drops, you have some of those circumstances. Cold, you know, I know Cleveland knows what they're doing, but do you guys want to take a chance with those other players? I think you can. Um, obviously, Amari Cooper is really good on the course of the season. He's been horrific in his road games. This is a road game against tough defense. 
Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones has been really consistent. A lot of yardage and targets and receptions, especially while David Njoku has been out. David Njoku did not practice Wednesday, still, still dealing with the high ankle sprain. So I, I think both of those, op Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones are both decent flex options that I would put behind Gabriel Davis. In their Mike, Christian Watson or those two guys? Uh, Christian Watson. But it's th those two, especially Donovan, like I'm going up to the wire of I need to see the reports from the field. How are the like? How are the field conditions? Is it snowing? Because we're st we're still too far away to know for sure if the snow will be cleared by then. But but if the snow isn't actively coming down and they've cleared the field and it's just cold, I still would be willing to play Peoples Jones, Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper with the road splits. It's just, I'm not. I'll, I'll go on absurd. record. I'm not playing them. Them Cleveland wide receivers. Okay. Okay. Uh, Buffalo just lost a close game. This is. What's the line in this game? Seven and a half gives Cleveland seventeen points. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna personally stay away. Okay, I mean over the last six weeks, Buffalo twenty sixth against fancy wide receivers, allowing over thirty points a game to the position. I don't think there's upside. Okay. Um, Donovan Peoples Jones has not been uh, in the top twenty four this year. He has not scored it. He has like the does he have the most yards without a touchdown or is it Deontay? I mean, basically, no, I'm not banking on a touchdown in Buffalo. Sure, but it's just saying the, the to quote the not in the top 24 while the guy is averaging basically 80 yards for the last eight weeks or so. I mean, he's been good. Just isn't it score. fair to say that there's I don't see upside if he's never been in there? Sure, you could say if that, or or you could say there is the regression to the mean of he should have three touchdowns or so at this point. Okay. This, yeah, I mean, you could look at it from either side. It's, I know, but the, the Donovan Peoples-Jones is not a proven commodity. So what's the regression to? Well, I mean, you, you've, you've got a, a proven nature of him being involved in this offense, especially while Njoku's been gone, but it proven to the point of a consistent floor, not necessarily any kind of ceiling. So Are I, you I, making a, your very first touchdown guarantee, Mike? I am not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Uh, quick break. Back with another matchup. Chicago Bears are three and seven. They take on the four and six Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Atlanta three and a half point home favorites. The over under is forty nine. Uh, this game should be fun. I mean, you, you have two below five hundred teams. That uh, the storylines surrounding them are more. Look, they're interesting for fantasy purposes. The yes. Bears, uh, they give up a ton of fantasy points to running backs. Past six weeks, they've done that to the wide receiver as well. They've definitely gotten worse on the back end. You know, it's been a fun offense to watch. Justin Fields has been on fire, a blazing inferno. They need, like Justin Fields, if he got near that stadium in Buffalo, no problems with the snow. Oh, yeah. Well, there'd be a problem with... Like a flood? Yes. Yeah. Uh, David Montgomery, you know, just uh, Khalil Herbert Gone. is on IR. And so David Montgomery has a huge opportunity here. I mean, the the Falcons, 25th against the running back position over the last six weeks, 22nd on the year. He's a good start. I I, I feel like he He's is great. He should be a great start. With, with He did not practice on Wednesday. Personal reasons, we have we we don't know what's going on with David Montgomery. Uh, but at this point, no reason to expect he won't play, but just saying, you need to keep an eye on that. He, he should have 20 opportunities in this game. Yes, he should. And if he has 20 opportunities against the Atlanta Falcons, even if he does not get a touchdown, he should have a safe enough floor. The touchdowns should still be coming for him. I know Justin Fields has been real selfish, hogging all them touchdowns. Um, He's just taking what belongs to him, man. <laughs> that's, that's fair. But I, I have no uh, fears starting David Montgomery. Just He's had some down games, but the situation is great this week. Uh, the backup there is going to be Treston Ebner, mm -hmm. who uh, with the personal day for David Montgomery was the top back in practice. Darnell Mooney against yes. the Atlanta defense. Yep. <clears throat> he won't be the one scoring the touchdown, obviously. That'll be Chase Claypool. Well, but, Mike, Darnell what? Mooney can you know get it done. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm checking in on the Falcons' defense on the season. 32nd out of – 32 uh, against fantasy mm. wide receivers over the past six weeks. 
Uh, 32nd over out of 32. So You're saying maybe both can get in the end zone? That's what I'm saying. That's the, the absolute best possible matchup for fantasy wide receivers. Justin Fields on fire. We, we've talked about, like, Fields isn't going to hit a 60-yard rushing touchdown every single week. And his passing touchdowns, oh, since the change of the offense, the touchdowns are on the rise as well. I think they're – it's crazy to be in this world, the 3-7 and seven Bears of where they were at the beginning of the year to now, like, pretty much the key pieces in in this offense in play. Fields, great play. Montgomery, great play. Mooney, you can start him. Chase Claypool is apparently scoring a touchdown this week. That's it, though. Because the wizard over there. Yeah. You're out on – Claypool is going to catch two for 24 and a touchdown. Okay. Oh, oh. So you're Just not to starting. put the full stat line And in then there. Cole Komet, four touchdowns in the last two weeks. I mean, he, he did not practice on Wednesday with the thigh, but if he's active, he's in streaming contention. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a streamer, but monitor that uh, injury. It was a – did you say it was a thigh? That's what we have listed. Yeah. Uh, both teams want to run the ball. Chicago's number one in rush rate. Atlanta's number two. The over under is nice. Uh, Cordero Patterson. Look, Mike, we're, I know we're going to talk about him later. Yeah. That makes me happy because last week was very concerning for people seeing so few touches, you know, Tyler Algier on the field, Caleb Huntley on the field, Avery Williams on the field. It was annoying. You know, this, this, ex, this offense, you think they get back to Cordero? The the story that I tell myself with Patterson heading into this week uh, was the guy is still returning from his injury, and I mean it was it was really rainy, right? Am I re I'm remembering that correct? The the game on Thursday there was a bunch of rain. Those were the tears of Patterson manager. That's that's. <laughs> you talking about Panthers? And yeah, Falcons? yeah, it was rainy. Yeah, like the field conditions. Perhaps they were trying to protect Patterson from from you know slipping. Hurt, re-aggravating an injury, and so they went with the other guys. You're, you're gifted. You should write little stories for people <laughs> when they have a bad week with a certain player because that was that was persuasive enough for me. It was like a little bedtime this, story. It's what we have to do when we play fantasy Once football. Once upon a time, they wanted to protect Cordero Patterson because the the snap percentage it went it went down a point, but the opportunities went way down. So I I think he will be back. He's their he's the best running back on the team. Drake Lennon and Kyle Pitts are both close your eyes gambles. Mm -hmm. That's what it is every week. Um, look, <laughs> there's injuries, right? There's injuries at the tight end position, and and you may be backed into it, but you're probably going to be unhappy. That's just Drake Lennon and Kyle Pitts. Their subtitle is you're probably going to be unhappy this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, put it this way: Cole Komet. Let's say he practices in full rest of the week. He plays. You playing Cole Komet or you playing oh, yeah. Kyle Pitts? Yeah, yeah Cole Komet. Cole, that's that's where we're at. All right, the Philadelphia Eagles are eight and one, and they take on the four, five, and one Indianapolis Colts. This game's in Indianapolis. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Philadelphia minus seven. Doing it again. Oh man! Andy's almost upset of the week. The Philly fans don't like me. I got a lot of messages about that because of what happened on Monday night. Did Did you tell them that you didn't play the football game? I tried. I tried to let them know it was on them, but then they blamed the refs, and we just moved on. Yeah, they had a point for a couple plays. <laughs> uh, so the Colts' defense, uh, over the last six weeks, number one against opposing fantasy wide receivers, 10th against tight ends, no Dallas Goddard, games at home in Indianapolis. I like what I've seen from the Colts' defense in spurts this year. Jonathan Taylor is healthy. A.J. Brown, we think he's healthy. He says he's fine. Remember, don't listen to the players. Mm -hmm. um, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown were both limited in practice. I think this is a game. Indianapolis needs it to, to stay in contention, so I think it will be a very close one. Do you guys find me to be uh, silly in this prognostication? Nope. For the second week in a row, I'm in complete agreement with you. I took the, I took the points on the Indianapolis Colts side. They're at home. They've got the coaching change, and maybe they are trying to buy into Saturday. Give it, a, give it everything you got. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that so he's it, a leader of men. That's right. Um, I think the way that this matches up with what I, I believe is an injured A.J. Brown. I'm not saying he's not going to play, and I'm not saying you can't play him, but I don't think he's at full strength. You saw him uh, kind of roll that ankle, and then you saw him fall later in the game, you know, on a on a really important route. He's not practicing in full, so 
you're not at full strength here for the Eagles, and I think at home in Indianapolis, I still have, I think, almost upset is right. I think the Eagles win this game, but I, I think this could be a closer game. Eagles defense has struggled against running backs over the last six weeks. They're actually 23rd in football, giving up 22-plus fantasy points per game. Jonathan Taylor, you should play him without fear. Uh, at home, good opportunity for him. You do have renewed options in the wide receiver room for the Colts. I'm not saying they're guarantees, but Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell should have, uh, I would say, probably seven-plus targets each in this game, and you just have to roll the dice and hope they're good enough. Yeah, the – I mean, I don't know. I get, I get that the matchup is terrible against the Eagles for their fantasy wide receivers. But how do you not play Paris Campbell, who has you have to like Paris Campbell with Matt? So his last three games with Matt Ryan, he has been a wide receiver one, not just oh, I he got me points in the flex position. He was a top twelve wide receiver. It's a it's absurd. And then there's the. The two games right in the middle, the the jelly of that sandwich, which was terrible, was Sam Ellinger, who didn't target Paris Campbell. But Matt Ryan loves just checking it down short to Paris Campbell and seeing what he can do. I, I would agree that Paris Campbell is a, a, a decent option. I don't think he is a must-start guy. He he was everything you just laid out, but he had a touchdown in, in all three of those games. Sure, but also seven receptions in all 200 three. 200 target pace in all yeah. three of those games, too. <laughs> he's, he's certainly gotten a lot of targets. But it's not like he wasn't around with Matt Ryan in the beginning of the year, playing a bunch of snaps, running all the routes, and had bad games. So I don't think it's a guarantee that Paris Campbell is locked and loaded. You know, we've, we've Paris Campbell, Christian Watson, Christian Watson, Mike. Uh, uh, that really depends on my scoring format. PPR, Paris Campbell. Okay. Sure, half PPR. Paris Campbell, standard. I'll take Christian Watson. Rookie only league. Mm. Who I can't play Paris Campbell then. Yeah, so Watson. Yeah. I mean, it's basically He Paris. almost trapped you. It's it's pretty much Paris Campbell's rookie season. Miles Sanders in this game, you're going to play him. Jalen Hurts, of course. And uh, you can't predict the tight end position in Indianapolis right now. And if you need the Goddard replacement, it is Jack Stoll. Is that correct? Yeah, I think he is. For whom the bell stalls? For whom the oh, stall? Yeah, there's bell. something there. We'll okay. workshop that. Yeah, we'll get that going. I do what think, do you think Kyle? he is. Kyle, you might know this off the top of your head. Is he 2,500 right now on DraftKings? Like, he's a stone man. Oh, yeah. stone man. He, he's been in That's a, he's my a lineup stall. a few a times. Okay. But what it, yeah. Back to the workshop. <laughs> All right. Uh, Devontae Smith? Yeah, I, I think Devontae Smith appears to be the healthiest uh, receiving option right uh, now, but I, the Colts, the Colts defense is not giving up a lot of fantasy points to wide yeah. receivers. The matchup isn't great. I don't think you bench him. I don't know if we ever want to do this, Brooksy. Maybe we can build out a show where we do the Mount Rushmore of players you're most scared to always like to start. Like Devontae Smith is that for me. He has been for a couple of, of years where we all know he's he's great. Yeah. Like if you give Devontae Smith ten targets, give me that every week. I just get I get a little scared sometimes. Yeah. I get it. The New York football Jets are six and three. They take on the five and four New England Patriots in New England. Oh. DK Sportsbook line. New England minus three and a half. The over under is just thirty eight. That gives uh gives the Patriots twenty one points. The Jets just over seventeen. Uh there's there's a lot on the line here. The Jets move into first place in the AFC East with a win impressive if they lose and the bills win they move into last place that's your nfc or afc east that's hey stakes are high i mean good for you it's this matchup's like you two yeah right like one of you could go to the top and then one of you can go to the bottom yeah we one of i mean genuinely our our matchup is whoever wins probably has a bye week for the playoffs not just like oh we're in and the other one might miss so this is I I feel you, Jets. Are we? Is this a guaranteed two man show on on Monday next week? I mean, yeah, one of the... us is not going to be here. Well, I won't be here if I lose. I'll, I'll be gone. From I'll this be planet. here, but I'll be a real grump a dump. Uh, grump a dump. <laughs> I love it. So with a lot on the line here, let's talk fantasy. Ramondre Stevenson since week three, the RB eight. Lock him in. Mm -hmm. Yep, you have to start him. Jets defense is pretty good, but Ramondre's just been too 
solid and in the passing game yeah. I think that makes him safe even if you do end up getting more work from Damian Harris who you can't really start yet but you certainly need to continue to roster him uh the if he gets more work this week I won't be surprised but I I don't think it'll make Ramondre have a bad game Ramondre is averaging five targets a game like to be to get double digit carries in the Patriots offense and then five or more targets per week that's that is outrageous volume over the last six weeks, both of these defenses are top 10 against quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers. You know, Jacoby Myers, last time these teams played, was 9 for 60 and a touchdown. I think he is a He's fine. Uh, a fine play. But beyond Stevenson and Myers, I think you just kind of set it down and, um, you know, respect the fact you have Mac Jones trying to facilitate things and you need to find options elsewhere yeah I mean put it this way two of my favorite defenses this week are in this same game so yeah I, I'm not looking for too many offensive players uh, you're right Ramondre Jacoby on that side check out let's talk Jets yeah and Michael Carter last time we saw him RB9 against Buffalo the Patriots are the number one defense on the year against the running back position it will be a timeshare between him and James Robinson is this a week that you would just literally sit Michael Carter yes okay. I, I'm not looking to start Good, either I'm one playing of these, against them this week <laughs> either of these running backs I I would play someone like Devin Singletary over either one obviously touchdowns can happen you could fall in the end zone but this Patriots defense has just been outstanding against Michael backs. Carter or Melvin Gordon against the Las Vegas Raiders yeah, I'd go Gordon that's tough I'll Michael take, I'll take Carter because I think he could PPR his way to relevance Michael Carter or Kenyon Drake for the Baltimore Ravens against the Carolina Panthers with the the knowledge that Gus Edwards returned to practice yesterday um pass on the question I okay. have Kenyon, he passed it's I have up Kenyon to you Drake one spot ahead right now so I'll stick with my ranking is it fair to say Garrett Wilson is your only Jets starter yeah, that, that you is, that you want to get out that there? is correct Garrett Wilson last time we saw him I believe was over 100 yards for the first time in his career oh nice the, nope, I'm wrong. Oh. That was two weeks ago. He was at 92 last week, though. Seven targets, nine targets. Top, uh, he was 16th and 13th at wide receiver. He's been pretty good. Where yeah. are we with Tyler Conklin, who, uh, when he played New England in week eight, two tutties, and that's like that's the weak point of the Patriots' it's defense. It's fine. But we, you saw him have the huge game with the 10 targets. The next week just completely vanished. Or Do you think they will exploit that? Would you play Tyler Conklin or Kyle Pitts? I – Conklin over Pitts. Okay. Oh, but, what? Yeah. We got to – Move on. Yeah, let's move, move on. on. The Rams are 3-6. and six. They take on the 3-7 and seven Saints. Two disappointing uh, teams this year. DraftKings Sportsbook line, New Orleans, minus three at home. The over-under is 39. Is that the most updated line we have with the Matthew Stafford news, Kyle? That's what we have right now. My goodness. That makes sense. I mean, it really does. The The Rams offense with Stafford hasn't been boat racing that anybody. That makes sense to you? Yeah, no, it does. New this Orleans is awful too. No, this offensive line for the Rams has been so bad. You lose Cooper Cup. You lose two more offensive linemen. You go to the Saints, a very difficult environment, and they have a good uh, front uh, there. The, the pass rush is going to be in Stafford's oh, face man. all day You think the Saints long. win this game? Is that your prediction? I do think the Saints win this game. And you have the three Stooges now at wide receiver in Los oh, Angeles. Oh, man. Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson, Ben Skoranek with no Cooper Cup. I mean, that plays a part in this line too, right? Yeah. Marshawn Lattimore is still out. Is that right? That's correct. So, uh, Allen Robinson, is he at the top of that list of those three wide receivers if you, if you need a spot start? He has to be at the top of the list because he's already been getting targets. He – projects to be the the red zone target that might get a touchdown but the list starts very late in my rankings so uh, Allen Robinson is not someone I'm really looking to start and really it's more like I like Ben Skoranek m the most in reality because I I could play him in DFS where I think he's like 3900 or something and you try to PPR your way to uh, a punt play at the position I'm not liking the idea of starting Allen Robinson in my home leagues, but he would be my pick first. What do you do with Tyler Higby, who seems like you a – play him. Okay, so the Saints are number one against tight ends. Yeah, it at this point it doesn't matter. We're back to Tyler Higby is very necessary. I, I, I think he could oh. end up with 
eight or nine targets and end up with 30 yards. He, if so I hope last, you're in a full last PPR. Last week was, was great, right? Eight, eight catches, 73 yards. Um, I know three or four of those came on like the last drive of the game. The three weeks before, he was terrible, but I do tend to agree with Mike that options at tight end are so slim. You're hoping like, for four screens in this game, four emergency checkdowns, like, but it's scary to me. But if you're saying, well, he could end up with eight to nine targets and poor production, the fact that you have a, tar uh, a tight end who's getting eight to nine targets, you gotta, you got you got to push those chips in and hope that he catches them. You touch on any of the running backs? Oh no, not no, no! You can't make me. I mean, I'm hoping for Kyron Williams to break out, but I'm not playing any of them. What about Kamara? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What is, <laughs> yeah. Super. Cam okay, I'll play him over the uh, Rams guys. Six receptions over the last two weeks for Alvin Kamara. Hmm. You'd like to see that go up, Chris Olave? Curious. Kyle, what is this new metric you want to talk about? Uh, ESPN has a new receiver tracking metric and basically Chris Lalave is top five in the league in open score and and yak score like he's he's elite already well let's get a good game because it's been a minute Olave's in Kamara's in do I talk anymore about I'm, these Saints I, Jarvis Landry is back on the field we're not going to start him in fantasy but be aware of that for he was back last week yeah yeah like what do you do are, are you are we continuing the Taysom Hill experiment or Looking at Juwan Johnson, who has more PPR points on the season than Taysom Hill. I wish we had time to talk and, about that, Mike. Well, okay. Well, what if I told you <laughs> that Juwan Johnson, in three of the last four weeks, has been a top eight fantasy wide receiver. He's been top four in two of the last four games. I like, would he's... say that I watched those football games. Okay. I would say that um, I observed – like, his touchdowns freak me out. Okay, but they still count. They still count. And two of them came um as garbage time final touchdowns of the game. One of them came when the defense thought he stepped out and they ignored him going down the sideline. Sure. They still count. He's a magician. I they still I count, you. but I just feel like the bottom might fall out if you were to put him in a starting lineup. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's a the, better the play. The matchup is better. How about this game? Higby versus Juwan Johnson. Oh, Higby? I'd play Higby. I'd play Higby. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just, I thought as, you were going to say Taysom Hill or Juwan Johnson. As the Juwan That's when Johnson it gets more supporter, I would play Higby over him. But let's let's see. Would you play uh, like Hayden Hurst against Pittsburgh or Juwan Johnson? I'm playing Hayden, Hayden Hurst. Hurst. Yeah. Dawson Knox against Cleveland or Juwan Johnson? Dawson Knox. Give me Josh Allen. Yeah. The 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 thing about Juwan Johnson is that uh, obviously last week I think that was his first big kind of breakout good game with Landry in the lineup. Um, so he could be breaking out. We could see that. Taysom Hill or Juwan Johnson, Mike? Uh, I, man, I, for the brand, I have to play Juwan Johnson. <laughs> Detroit Lions, three and six, take on the seven and two New York Giants. DraftKings Sportsbook line, the Giants minus three, the over-under is 45. Um, the locks in this game, Saquon Barkley, Amon Ross, St. Brown, no need to discuss them. They are in. Yep. Beyond that, though, you do have some headaches. You've got uh, the backfield in Detroit. DeAndre Swift, Jamal uh -huh. Williams, 55% of 55! the running back touches last week for Jamal Williams. That's fine. Just give 40% to DeAndre Swift, please. Yeah, I actually that's... think this might be a game you're disappointed in both players. Uh, yeah, that's I would, very possible. Yeah, I mean, I would be surprised. We're, we'll we'll talk about it here in a, in a minute, as I do really like Jamal Williams. Really? Yeah. On the road against the seventh-ranked run, run defense, we'll splitting time? We'll talk about it in a minute, yeah. He doesn't want to talk about it now. Well, I don't want to repeat myself, so yeah. We're, we're getting late. Daniel Jones has an opportunity against these Lions. Uh, I don't know who the benefactors will be. I think Daniel Jones can have a nice game, but Wandale's been brutal. Wandale like useless. Has, yeah. Um, Darius like, Slayton's been good. Yeah, that's if you're throwing a dart at the Giants wide receiver, we, we've wanted it to be Wandale Robinson. I think that the New York Giants have wanted it to be Wandale Robinson because they tried to get rid of Darius Slayton <laughs> this offseason. I mean, the top of the list of, of potential cut candidates over the offseason, Darius Slayton was there, and yet he's necessary to this team, and he is producing. So if if you're taking the shot, that's where I would go. Yeah, Wandale's skill set is not Darius Slayton's skill set. They are very different players. So um, Slayton has a way of just having a big yardage game 
on a couple of plays that seems to help stabilize that um, start fantasy wise. Uh, are there big questions anywhere else on not, this office? I, I thought there'd be more. Not really. No, I, I in think your explanation of Jamal Williams, are you going to say what, what to do with DeAndre Swift? Um, I, I can tell you right now that I would prefer to look elsewhere over DeAndre Swift just okay. because of utilization. I'm still terrified that he's DeAndre not going or Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I know. We're playing each other, Mike. This is a personal question. Um, I would. Oh, play like you took half the show on personal questions. <laughs> I would. Well, right, because I'm personal. Oh, it's him. It's me. Okay. Um, He's more I, personal I to himself than you are. I would I play you. Gibson over DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift or Zeke if he's back. I would play. Whew, that's tough. Probably Zeke. Okay. Uh, let's let's go through this one real quick too. The Panthers at three and seven, ta taking on the Baltimore Ravens at six and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Baltimore minus 13 points. The over-under is 41. I don't know if I've seen an implied point total as low as 14 this year, but Carolina, congrats. That's you. And uh, they Can might, they get that there? might be too much. It really might be too much. I don't want to play a Panther. Not one. Yeah. Are you willing to play Deonta Foreman or DJ Moore? I mean. <laughs> They're going to turn back to Baker. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and Deonta Foreman at least will have volume. Yeah, and you hope something fluky happens in the game. Can't wait for Baker Mayfield's endless pump fakes. He does. He does pump fake uh, into a sack. Yeah, too much and a lot. Uh, DJ Moore is what he. We we know what DJ Moore is at this point. He's a player who's going to get six or more targets. A talented athlete that will probably have a bad game has the chance and the talent to have a monster game. So you can plug him in your lineup if you're looking for a boom play. If you're uh, you know, a real underdog and you're needing someone that can get a big play, then you could throw DJ Moore in there because you've obviously seen it a couple times this year regardless of who the quarterback was. And to be fair to Deonta Foreman, the I mean, he, did, he did what he's supposed to do in those Atlanta Falcons games. It's not his fault that the matchup is so juicy. Uh but he Pretty also good against Tampa. He was good against Tampa Bay. I mean, a, a lot of it was padded from a, a, a broken 60-yard run, but that's what I'm talking about. For Deonta Foreman, you're hoping if you put him in against Baltimore, he breaks through the line and he gets you Oof. a 40-plus yard run. Yeah, and this one is on the road. It's going to be a it's going to be an uphill battle for them. Lamar, Gus, and, and who's the wide receiver? <laughs> I mean, Right now, you, you don't know if Mark Andrews is going to be back. You know, you like to see the limited practice, but we've seen this before, and he didn't play. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if and he doesn't play, Isaiah Likely is, a, yep. is, is in your lineup. Simple flow fun, chart. Yeah. He's, Isaiah Likely is a phenomenal start whenever Mark Andrews is gone. If Gus Edwards plays, do you play him or uh, Pacheco against the Chargers? Pacheco. Is Kenyon yeah. Drake off your list if Gus plays? No. Yes. He's not Ooh, off. yes and no. Fight. Well, I mean, it's it's a matter of options, right? Like I say, yes, he's off my list in a dynasty league. I am uh, forced to start him, because so he's not off your list. Then <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Mister like, Liar Face. Uh, yeah, that is a bold face lie. I want him to be off my list. I hope Brian that Robinson, you, have you play over him, hundred yeah, percent. Sure. I think Brian Robinson's a very good play this week. Would you play? Okay, uh, would you dance with Kareem Hunt? No, no. You'd play Kenyon Drake over Hunt. Hunt had six yeah. carries. No, I, I'd play I Hunter. Would, I'd play Hunter over Drake. I you've you've not felt the pains of starting. No, Kareem I just Hunt. think that the way this game is going to be against Buffalo, the rushing opportunity, you could have more Hunt in this game. You could. I, I mean, hope Kenya so. Drake could get two carries if Gus busts his back. I don't. I think he's safer for more than two. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 will timeshare. It just comes. Is this just me not wanting him to be good? Mm -hmm. That that could be it. It comes down. I guess to, he had eleven attempts even when he was bad. And like when the the game after the Gus Edwards when he returned and had the two touchdowns, Kenyon Drake was very involved in that game as well. So it it will be a timeshare regardless. The the roulette of the touchdowns, though, that's you're just hoping that your color lands. All right, say the name of the wide receiver you would take a chance on in a a matchup here. You know, Carolina, twenty fifth against wideouts. Devin Duvernay, not Demarcus uh, Robinson. No. Yeah. I mean, you you said I had to say the name yeah, of a. Yeah, no, no, you did, yeah. and you you accomplished uh, the goal. Yep, thank you. All right, the rankings, the start sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. We'll cover the rest of the matchups tomorrow. It's time to get into our starts. Starts of the week. 
Well, I got jealous. This is, this is grand theft. I got jealous, and I got into the show doc early. And, and grand now, theft. And now Justin Fields is my start of the week. What a great start, Suck Andy. Suck it, Mike. The Foot Clan knows. Look, I know this is cheating. Yeah. We all know that Justin Fields should be out there. And but he's I have my seen, guy. I have seen a lot of questions about Mahomes, Justin Fields. Oh, my God. Josh Allen in the snow or Justin Fields. I'm not willing to sit those two guys, but I am willing to sit everybody else. I think Justin it's Fields, eh, you know, the Bears, they've unlocked that cheat code. He's average. He's averaging 17.1 rushing fantasy points per game. So, but, uh, you know, we've seen it broken down all different ways, but he's a running back that averages 17 rushing fantasy points per game and then is the whole quarterback, right? This is, this is like if you gave Taysom Hill a bunch of steroids at the quarterback position. Um, it's been incredible. Uh, that's Saquon Barkley's fantasy points. The, during the that 17? span, the 17. That's crazy. So you get Saquon plus a quarterback. Um, and it doesn't matter if that quarterback looks like Mahomes that day or he looks like Sam Darnold that day. Yeah, You still get the quarterback points. So um, right now he's got the highest percentage of fantasy points via the ground for any quarterback ever. So it has been predominantly on the ground, but he's been a much better passer too because if your defense is thinking about having someone run for 178 yards on you, you're going to give up some – Cole Komet, no one's around you type of plays. Chase Claypool touchdowns. Chase Claypool touchdowns. Atlanta is quite forgiving. They rank dead last in passing yards allowed in pressure rate. Justin Fields over everyone but Mahomes and Allen. Yeah, uh, I, I like it. I'm going to go with Dak Prescott as my start of the week for fantasy quarterbacks. Two areas are key to success. What kind of success do they have in the red zone? And do they connect on big plays? The Vikings have allowed the second highest red zone touchdown rate in the league and the highest rate of 15-plus yard passing plays in the NFL. Check and check. Since the beginning of 2021, Dak has averaged 41 pass attempts per game on the road. The volume and the matchup should be good for Dak to be a top-five quarterback this week. Oh, I love it. Because he's my quarterback this week. And uh, quarterbacks, are, it, it's interesting this week. It's, it's hard to get – a strong start you guys you two have a good one so i just i went with my streamer it's daniel jones it's the plus matchup against the lions defense check out this guy he had justin fields last week and now he has to go daniel oh, jones man what a I'll loser bet you wish you had justin fields i do on my teams how many teams you got justin fields on over there zero. big believer zero that's right fraud uh daniel <laughs> <laughs> just I way still. to change your opinion yeah yeah it's too late for you the daniel jones <laughs> the daniel jones meetings have locked the door or, uh, sorry, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They have. Also, oh, you've traded. You've Justin always Fields. been a Daniel Jones guy. Good Big point. Daniel Jones truther. He locked that door. Yeah. Stay in there with the Daniel. The door has been locked from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> uh, Daniel Jones is a fine streaming play this week. Uh, Detroit allowing the most yards per game, most points per game. It's just, it's all there. Uh, just don't watch. Okay. Brian Robinson is my running back start of the week. Taking on Houston, got that Monday night victory where they ran the ball 49 times. He saw 26 carries, got into the end zone. I still think the math equation for Brian Robinson requires a touchdown, even in this yes. game, for you to be happy. But um, season high, 52% of snaps. No J.D. McKissick out there. Game script-wise, Washington should be able to take it to Houston and put these running backs in a position to look. I you could have a fourth quarter of Brian Robinson running the football because they have a lead. Uh, this is delicious. Play play your running backs against Houston, please. Yeah, no, I I, I like Brian Robinson a lot. And I, running, for for the record, I like Antonio Gibson too. Yeah, yeah. Um, at running back, we talked about it a minute ago. It's Jamal Williams. Andy, you brought up the fact that the Giants are number seven against the run. They don't look like a great matchup but it's a lot better than you might think the New York Giants are allowing the most yards before contact the second highest yards per carry in the NFL here's the last couple of running backs they've faced Damian Pierce 94 yards and then a red zone fumble that could have turned into a touchdown Travis Etienne 114 yards and a score Kenyon Drake 119 yards and a score Zeke and Pollard combined for 178 yards the Lions offensive line is great it and, is. Ja and Jamal Williams has been awesome all year I, I I'm making it my start of the week now my only concern with Jamal Williams is not the Giants defense he missed practice with an illness now I'm not concerned about the illness if he plays if he plays they're saying he's good to go I think he's you should start him but we saw Damian Harris miss an entire game with an illness if he doesn't play 
Obviously not a good start of the week. I would go with Isaiah Pacheco as my backup. We saw of- Devontae Adams play with an illness and have, what, one reception? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, I mean, mm-hmm. the bug that's going around right now. I, I If Jamal Williams is active, I will be starting. Okay. He got the owl. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, my running back start of the week, I'm going with Cordero Pitter Patterson against the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Keep uh, those legs moving. <laughs> the, uh, the Chicago-Atlanta game, the highest over-under of the week. Because the NFL has turned upside down, the touchdowns, they always come in bunches for Cordero Patterson. He is he ranks second among all running backs with a first down or a touchdown on 30% of his carries. He is a great player. The matchup is there. Bears, 29th in red zone touchdown rate. So I, I think that the, the Falcons can keep up with good old Arthur's game plan, which is to establish it. And I think that, that Patterson's ready. Kadarius Tony is my wide receiver start of the week. Oh, the baby. Chargers. Love it. Love it. Targeted on 29% of his routes last week. Two rush attempts. He's a weapon. The best one they have outside of Travis Kelsey right now. He was the wide receiver 12 last week. I don't know if people realize that. Explosive. Juju. McColl. You know, Sky Moore is not getting it done. Um, he has eight total touches for the Chiefs. That's equated to 102 in a score. I think he gets the five to eight touches in this game and it's going to be good enough for you to be very very happy with Kadarius Tony I'm in at wide receiver I'm going with Joshua Palmer as my start of the week I do not believe that both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be active for this game and if one of them or both of them are gone Joshua Palmer should be in your lineup he's had eight targets in five of his last six games played including eight targets against Kansas City, where he came away with a touchdown in week two. That is his only touchdown on the season. Kansas City ranks 28th in scheduled Justin Fantasy points to the wide receiver. We just saw Christian Kirk blow up on them. This is going to be very, very necessary for a, a game in division. Um, and, and you saw two weeks ago, over 100 receiving yards for Joshua Palmer. Big disappointment this last week, but this last week, was on the road against the Kansas City or uh, the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Great defense. This one is going to be a good week for Joshua Palmer. And Justin Fields was stolen from me, but I've got Darnell Mooney, the wide receiver for the Chicago Bears, as the as my start of the week. We did talk about target share of the context, but he's still at 30%. He's the go-to guy for Justin Fields, and I think that they will have success through the air as well as on the ground with the Falcons ranking dead last. We haven't seen that explosion just yet, but over the last five weeks, you know, averaging seven targets a game. And if, like, if Cole Komet can get it done, like, like if they actually guard him, then it's going to go to Darnell Mooney. His season would look different to fantasy players if he had gotten into the end zone more than one time. Sure. That's been the story. You know, his, his yardage has gone up. He's a really good player. A couple more touchdowns, we'd be talking a little bit differently, and maybe one comes this week. Dalton Schultz against Minnesota is my start of the week at the tight end position. Um, I think he might be the tight end three rest of season behind Kelsey and Andrews. Possible. And in four games with Dak, it's been great. Seven for 62, five for 49, six for 74, six for 54 and a touchdown. Uh, that'll do. Uh, that That's better than most tight ends yes. that you're ever going to get near. Um, get near? Yeah. Sure. Approach. Um, toss into your lineup, whatever you want to say. Uh, it goes with Jason's start of the week. Yeah, I tried to trade my start of the week for your start of the week in, <laughs> in real football. Uh, if you were with us on the party room last night, George Kittle was my trade away player. I am terrified of what his involvement is with the combination of Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. But I'm trusting the process. Arizona. I always start every tight end against Arizona, and they always come through. Obviously, George Kittle has the talent to come through. Arizona cannot guard a tight end uh, leaking out at all. Uh, Tyler Higby last week with a backup quarterback was 8 for 73. Since 2018, Kittle has averaged 5 and 76 against Arizona. Kittle was born for primetime in Mexico City. I think Kittle has a good game, and if your trade deadline is open after this week, I would still try to trade. It's a Monday night Dalton Mexico Schultz. City game, right? Oh. Yes. And for my tight end start of the week, I'm I'm going a little bit deeper here. Oh, the underpants, they're back. They are back. It's Foster Moreau this week. He's a tight end. I think he's a spot starter for you. Uh, the, for the, the Raiders. For the Las Vegas Raiders. The matchup is slightly better than you would think because the Denver Broncos, if they are beat anywhere, it is by the tight end position over the past five weeks. It is the uh, 26th best 
as you would say, against the, the fantasy tight end. Look, Foster Moreau, he's the king of 40 yards. So if nothing, you'll get at least 40 yards. But I think he has a chance for another touchdown, uh, as we just saw the past week. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. As a reminder, the Foot Clan and I are about to battle the big baddie Robbie Gould. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Gould began to chuckle. My knees began to buckle, had me shaking like Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. But a horseman made him blind. Like Gandalf, he shined down the mountain, was Young Way Koo. That's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, okay, I'm back. All right, I come. I'm, I need all of you. I didn't realize all these kickers would be pretty into the narrative, like playing a big role in what's taking place here. But um, And, like, they all fight each other? There's well, some, some do, some help. So some is competitive there, position. Is there a dark side and a light side? For oh, for kickers? sure. Gould is on the dark side. Uh, the the is light that side is young way his too. last name? Yeah, I mean, he's I mean, he ghoul. started to chuckle. It's creepy. Yeah. Made my knees buckle. <laughs> All right. Tomorrow, the rest of the matchups, the Wheel of Shame. It's not me, Jason. It's not me, Andy. Oh, I wonder who it's going to be. Brooks. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think it's Brooks. Thank you to Jay Grizz for holding it down. Yes, incredible day. Great job, On the producer. ones and twos. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.